What is the current status of solar energy? First, I would like to discuss the production of solar modules. The figure shows the worldwide solar cell production. The vertical axis represents the annual production. We express the annual production in the total produced power capacity in megawatts. The horizontal axis represents time. The solar cell production is increasing exponentially every year. The red numbers represent the annual relative increase in production capacity in reference to the previous year. It shows that the production increases annually by more than 40%, which is an unprecedented growth. Secondly, this graph shows how the various PV technologies contribute to the global module production. The grey colors represent the wafer type crystalline silicon PV technology. As you can see, the crystalline silicon PV technology is the dominant technology and contributes to around 90% of the total module production. The inorganic thin film PV technologies like amorphous silicon, cadmium telluride and CIGS are responsible for the remaining 10%. The next graph shows the worldwide cumulative installed PV power, which is exponentially increasing in time as well. The different colors reflect the different regions in the world. The green area corresponds to Europe, which shows that the far majority of PV systems are installed in Europe. The Asia Pacific region, shown in light blue, is a good second, where most of the PV power is installed in Japan. The pink color corresponds to China, which shows an unprecedented increase in the installed PV capacity from 2010 to 2012. The purple area reflects the PV capacity installed in North and South America. Orange corresponds to the Middle East and Africa, whereas yellow corresponds to the rest of the world. It is important to note that the total installed solar power has passed the 100 gigawatt mark in 2012. Let's look for a moment in more detail to where the PV is installed in the world. This figure illustrates the relative contribution of various nations to the total installed PV power in 2012. Here we can clearly see that 31% of the total PV capacity is installed in Germany. This is a result of the German government's progressive feed-in tariff policy of the last 10 years. Considering that Germany lies within an area with a relatively low radiation level compared to the rest of the world, the large contribution of solar to Germany's electricity production shows the promising potential of solar energy for the sunnier parts of the world. The runner-up is Italy which accounts for 60% of the worldwide PV capacity. China, with a contribution of 8%, is the fastest growing market at the moment. In 2010, China only contributed with 2% to the global PV capacity. The United States, Japan and Spain are the other countries in the top six, with a relative contribution of 7-5% to to the worldwide installed PV capacity. Note that after the Fukushima disaster, the Japanese government introduced some progressive feed-in tariffs to promote and speed up the introduction of renewable energy sources. An interesting aspect of PV technology is that it's not only a European affair. The local demand and supply has been changing rapidly in the last 13 years. This figure illustrates the evolution of the worldwide supply and demand of PV modules in the various regions around the world. Blue represents Europe, red represents the Asian Pacific, mainly Japan, purple the Americas, mainly the United States, and pink represents China. Let's start with the demand. This figure shows that in 2000 the biggest market with a total share of 40% was in Japan. From that moment, due to the introduction of various subsidy policies in Germany, Spain and Italy, the European market share increased up to 80% by the year 2008. 
Around this time, the PV market appeared to be a local European affair. From 2009, the domestic PV market in China, the Americas and Asia Pacific are increasing very rapidly as well and catching up quickly with Europe. Now we look to the supply side. The Asia Pacific share on the market was increasing. Up to 2006, the European share was increasing slowly. From 2008, we see a big growth of production in China, made possible by a huge investment of the Chinese government into scaling up PV module manufacturing in China. In 2012, around 60% of all PV modules were produced in China. In 2000, as you can see, the PV market was an essential local market mix. The local demand and supply in Asia, Americas and Europe were in balance. By 2012, no local balance between supply and demand exists anymore. The majority of the demand is in Europe, whereas the majority of the production is in China. You see that the PV market has transformed from a local market of demand and supply to a global market of demand and supply. Another aspect that controls demand is the cost price of PV technology. How does the cost price of electricity generated by a PV system compare to the electricity delivered by your energy company? To answer this, we have to look towards the, this learning curve. The learning curve is the graph which shows how the cost price, or in this case the sales price, is dropping in time. In time, the industry gets more experienced. Progress in technology provides for better PV modules with higher efficiencies. This experience results in better and faster processing, leading to higher production yields. Upscaling of production leads to lower cost of the source materials. Learning curves usually show an exponentially decreasing cost price in time until the technology or product is fully developed. In this graph we have the average global sale prices of a PV module versus the cumulative installed power up to 20 gigawatts. Note that the points up to 20 gigawatt in the grey area are real data points up to 2009. The points in the white area are extrapolations of the general trend. Important to note is that the sales prices, discounting some fluctuations, follow a largely exponential decay. Currently, the average re retail price of only PV module is below $1 per watt peak. Now we will see how the cost price of a PV system is not only determined by the module. The red dots show the decrease in the cost price of a complete PV system. As you can see, in the early days of the PV technology, the system price was dominated by the module price. However, in the current situation, the contribution of the non-modular components starts to play the most dominant role. With non-modular components, I refer to components like the racking, wiring, inverter, battery for stand-alone systems or even maintenance cost. The difference between the red and green line corresponds to the non-modular cost and are indicated by the dark blue markers. This shows the learning curve of the non-modular components, which is dropping not as fast as the module price. This means that nowadays the reduction in cost price of a PV system will be mainly limited by the cost price of the non-modular components. This shows the advantage of crystalline silicon PV technology, which has higher module efficiencies ranging from 14 up to 20 percent in reference to thin film technologies. Higher conversion efficiency means higher yields per area. While the non-modular costs per area are the same, the cost price per watt peak of the non-modular costs will be consequently lower for modules with higher conversion efficiencies. In block 1.2 we have discussed that hydropower is responsible for 90% of the total worldwide electricity production and nuclear is 16%. The question now is how do these numbers compare to solar? For that I have constructed the following figure. On the vertical axis you see the 
cumulative installed capacity which is expressed in gigawatts of power. Note that this is a logarithmic scale. Here we only consider the energy sources which are not based on fossil fuels. Light blue represents hydroelectricity, dark green represents nuclear, red represents wind and dark blue represents solar. The installed nuclear power is hardly growing anymore, whereas the installed hydropower is still slightly growing in time. Wind is growing at a relative rate of 20% per year. As you can see, from 2008, solar is the fastest growing energy technology with a rate far above 40%. However, it's not fair to compare the installed power between technologies like this. The numbers given here represent the maximum power the energy source can produce, but it's not the average power the electricity source has delivered in reality. The relation between these two is called the capacity factor, which is basically a measure of how often an electric generator runs for a specific period of time. Nuclear has been 90% the highest capacity factor, followed by hydropower with an average capacity factor of around 40%. For wind energy, I have assumed an average capacity factor of 30% and for solar, I have assumed a capacity factor of 15%. A low capacity factor for PV systems can be explained by the fact that for most geographical locations, almost half of the solar day is devoid of solar radiation at nighttime. If you use these capacity factors, we can look at the effective installed power of these electricity sources. Currently, solar energy generates an order of magnitude less electricity than hydro and nuclear. However, I claim that the trend in the growth of solar energy will continue the coming years. If we extrapolate the trend of the last decade, we see that the installed power of solar energy will exceed nuclear wind and hydropower by the end of this decade. It is just a matter of time that solar becomes the most important energy source not based on burning fossil fuels. Why can solar guarantee a much faster capacity growth than the other technologies? First, solar energy is everywhere and available in great abundance. Realize that the total amount of energy in solar light incident on our planet is 10,000 times larger than our total energy consumption. By evaporation of water due to solar heat, hydroelectricity is a secondary form of solar energy. By solar induced temperature difference, wind is a secondary form of solar energy. Consequently, solar energy is the biggest renewable energy source around. Secondly, hydro, nuclear and wind are centralized electricity generation concepts. It means that you need a big dam, a big nuclear plant or a wind park to generate electricity. Building these large systems requires governmental involvement and big investors. PV systems can be installed centralized in large solar farms too. However, the unique advantage here is that PV systems can be installed decentralized as well. Many consumers of electricity can put their own PV system on their home. They become their own producer independent of the market. Another important factor is that in most parts of the world, the cost price of a PV system have met or dropped below grid parity. This means that having your own PV system is cheaper than buying the electricity from the grid. The installation of the decentralized PV system will be the big force behind the solar revolution of the coming years and will change the energy landscape much faster than most people think, as shown in this graph. As more and more people become aware of this, it is more likely that the growth will be further enhanced than it will be slowed down. In this course, I will introduce you to the technology behind this revolution.